Hello everyone and welcome to the beginning of the end of my Lucid Dream Discourse series. I'm Stephen Berlin and I said in my very first talk that this was going to be a short series and now this is number 12 and I'm at risk of you know pushing my luck here or pushing the limits of your patience. So I'm going to wrap this up with dream devices. I will have one other segment where I kind of give the rules of engagement and protocol for when I open this up to uh, uh, comments and uh, video responses. So let me get moving here. Uh, I also want to say that another reason I need to wrap this up, I know I've gotten a lot of really nice letters from people and I want to th really thank you for those. They've meant a lot to me over, over the period of doing these, uh, you know, to continue. But I've gotten out my transcendent dreams, which was my primary purpose in doing this, and I've also gotten out a lot of really important information on advanced lucid dreaming fundamentals, I think. So, uh, I don't want to overly influence you and your lucid dreams. You know, I talk about my dreams moving forward with major transform motion and very quickly. Well, I'm sure there are Buddhist lucid dreamers and their dreams are still and tranquil and serene. So there's room for all of this. Uh, I want some to hear about those experiences and then I have, you know, how the way my mind and my dreams work and share my experiences with you. So I think I've done that and uh, I will start another series uh, a little bit more expanded than on lucid dreaming uh, in a couple of months. So for those of you that want to you know, deal with me anymore, uh, you can look forward to that. Okay, dream devices, let's start going. Uh, this is the Nova Dreamer, which was produced by the Lucidity Institute. And uh, there are other ones like this on the market. I don't think this is sold anymore, it might be. But uh, there are some in the United, made in the United States and uh, some variations of this and some also made in Europe. So if you want to buy one of these, uh, I think they're not, they're not cheap, but uh, they might be worth the money to you. And uh, check into customer service, technical support, and uh, read reviews before you buy. All right, well, the premise of the Nova Dreamer was to cue you that you're dreaming. This is a mask that you wear to bed at night, and it's got foam cutouts, it's very comfortable, it attaches it with Velcro at the back of your head, and it has a little uh, device that slides into the front of the mask, with, powered by two AAA batteries, and what it does is you set it by pushing like the front of the button on the front of the mask like five times, and it will wait like 50 minutes, 10 for each push, uh, before it starts scanning your eyelids, or 90 minutes, which is when you usually have your first dream period. And then there's a little infrared sensor in the mask that detects your jittery, rapid eye movement eyes. It knows you're dreaming. I think it gives you a minute or two to get you securely in your dream. And then the mask starts flashing lights at you in your dream. And it flashes lights in any way you want to program them. They'll, they'll, you can have them alternate, alternate, you can have them simultaneous, you can make them long, you can make them short. You can do it three times, you can do it 20 times, you can make them dim, you can make them intense, all kinds of programmable features. And with sound, beep, 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 they even do that. So the idea is that when the mask notices that you're dreaming, that you will, some, you will go, oh, that's my dream mask going off, I'm in a dream, and become lucid. That's the advertised premise of these. Does it work? Well, yes, I've had cases where it's done exactly that. Uh, does it work all the time? No. Matter of fact, 99 out of 100 times it doesn't work, and I'm going to explain to you why. All right, now for me, uh, my mask, when, it, when I started seeing flashing lights in here, and you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic, I don't know that by now, it, when, when I start seeing flashing lights in my dream, I look in my rearview mirror and there's the cops chasing me. And I was even flying lucid in a dream once, and this, my mask started to go off, and I looked around and the police were even in helicopters coming after me. I thought, you know, Hey, what's the deal? Was I, you know, was I featured on America's Most Wanted, Dreaming Drunk? You know, what, you know, come on, <laughs> leave me alone. So I tried to outwit my mask. So I set it on the, since that was the typical reaction I was getting, was the, you know, the cop thing. So I put it on the highest possible intensity and the longest possible uh, pulse. So. And it was like blinding. I mean, these lights can really be bright right through your closed eyelids. So I thought, let's see what my dream comes up with there, because that certainly can't be police lights. Well, in that particular dream that night, I was standing in the nursing station at the Las Vegas State Mental Hospital where I worked. And uh, I was stand where I worked. <laughs> and I was standing inside the nursing station talking to, you know, fellow employees. 
and uh, suddenly this goes off. And I was just blinded. Just the whole scene, the whole dream scene just went away. And I thought to myself, there was a power failure. The floodlights are blinding me. Oh man, where do they get these floodlights? An immediate explanation. Now let's move on to the dream speaker to give you another example of the same phenomenon. They made a dream speaker which plugs into your dream mask and it will, you can record anything you want, you're dreaming, this is a dream, do a reality check, blah blah blah, well none of that worked for me. So I decided, well I'm going to outwit this again, so I just unlaunched into this every uh, terrible, perverted uh, expletive I could come up with. I, I called myself uh, every filthy name in the book, and I, and, and I do swear, but you know, not to that extent. So I thought, you know, it'll be interesting to see how my dream interprets that. Well, sure enough, I'm in my dream and I'm talking to two ladies. <laughs> and I'm talking to them, and this, uh, <laughs> my, my dream speaker starts going off. And uh, all of a sudden, all of these really horrific, terrible words in my voice start coming out while I'm talking to these two ladies. And they look at me, and they're, they're dream characters, but their eyes get really big. <laughs> as though I'm, you know, Charles Manson with Tourette Syndrome. And fortunately, I looked down and, thank God for dreams, I looked down and there was a suitcase on the floor. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, ladies, you know, in my carry-on luggage, I brought my dream speaker with me. And, uh, uh, you know, it's going off in my suitcase. And I started fumbling with my, you know, luggage there trying to get it to stop. So, now what's happening here? What's happening is your dream is coming up with a homologous variation a pattern recognition. It sees lights and it searches through your past, it searches through all of the day residue of your past, and it finds something that it can use that's a plausible explanation in your dream, and therefore you don't notice it. It's incorporated into your dream. And this has nothing, in my opinion, to do with intelligence. I don't care whether you're high on the IQ scale or low. It's the way the brain works. Now, I'm pretty sure that for some people who are really focused, and I'm not, uh, can and train themselves to recognize every light source in their dream as possibly being their Nova Dreamer. Well, this may work to make them uh, lucid very often. But for me, this is the best device on the planet to prove to you what I've talked about in Discourse uh, 11 and uh, 10. Dynamics of Dream Emergence and uh, Navigation in Dreams, how things move forward by homologous variation. Now, I want you very quickly, I want to point out that uh, watch my discourses again. I'm not just trying to get views, but if you go back now to discourse number seven where I talked about day residue, now you'll realize that when I talked about that brown substance, which was chocolate and mud and some other brown substance, that they're homologous variations. And I also say things in my discourses like, uh, you know, a pitfall of ground transportation is uh, sexual temptations. Well, hidden the message hidden in there is, if you want sexual temptations, ground transportation is probably the place to be. Although, uh, I've been flying in a dream and, you know, and had sexual temptations and I, that's not, I'd, rather, I'd rather be on the ground because otherwise I'll end up in the backseat of a Thunderbird. And I don't want that to happen. So, that's it. And, you know, I can't do anything about the waking world, but I certainly thank all of you that have watched me. I'm really grateful, and I wish you, in the dreaming world at least, peace.